Welcome to Living Seeds Farm. This is our seedling grow-out tunnel. As you can see, we've prepped a whole lot of nice-looking seedlings behind you, so it looks like we're professionals. Uh, <laughs> I reckon we grow, um, in spring, we grow tens of thousands of seedlings in this tunnel, and they're all busy being planted out. We're busy planting tomato seedlings out. We've planted out, uh, I think, about 100 and 115 varieties of tomatoes this year. And they're going to start planting out melons and cucumbers into our pollination tunnels. Probably today, it looks like I saw them putting down bone meal in, in the tunnels. So, today's discussion, well first of all, let's just get some, some, uh, some housekeeping out of the way. Next weekend, which is the 24th and the 25th of September, we have an open farm on Living Seeds Farm. We have multiple talks. We're doing the same talks multiple times on both days so that people can choose which day they want to come to and if you spend half a day on Living Seeds Farm, you'll be able to hear all of the talks. They're going to be quick talks, for a half an hour, 45 minutes, we're going to have a Q&A session, we're going to have stations up to demo seed starting um, equipment, you can come and try your hand at the different seed starting um, products that we sell, we're going to have our drip irrigation up. Our show garden is looking relatively miserable right now. We had an incredibly bad frost a couple of weeks back and that just decimated everything. So we've ripped everything out of the show garden. We're going to try and plant a whole lot of seedlings in the show garden. So the show garden at least looks like a show garden or the start of a spring show garden. Um, the, the seed store is going to be open for those two days only. All seed will be a flat price. Uh, or the majority of seed will be a flat price so we're not going to have individual prices just to make things a lot easier the last open day that we had we had i think we had about 250 people here and the bottleneck was our store so we're trying to um speed things up in the store so hopefully things will go well we're also doing we're doing talks on how to grow microgreens how to grow sprouts um pests and disease control because you need to start it now we're doing um, a talk on soil improvement, how to improve your soil for the coming season. It's every, everything is about the soil. And then we'll have a table doing what I'm doing today. Cool, guys. So I think l let's get started with the um, seed starting live video. And what we're a seed company, we sell seed, and we are well known to have the best germination rates in the country. And one of the reasons why we have the best germination rates in the country is that we grow so many varieties on our farm that we can't harvest large volumes of seed. A lot of seed companies out there, what they do is they will plant, for example, a tomato variety, they'll harvest that seed, and that seed will last in the next 10 years. And what happens is over the 10 years, their germination starts to fall off especially if it hasn't um, been stored correctly. We're on Living Seeds Farm. We literally sell out of seed every single year. So what happens is when you go to our online store and you see something is out of stock, know that the seed that we harvested in the previous season has now been sold out. We will have more seed, but it's next season and that seed will be fresh. So the germination is going to be absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, so um, we're a seed company. We... We sell seed, I think currently we sell about 1,200 varieties of seed. If you have never been to our website before, it's www.livingseeds.co.za. Simple as that. So, I think the, the first thing that we want to cover is there are seed starting rules. There are rules for, for starting seed. And they are pretty simple rules. If you've got a pen and paper, just take these notes down. Because if you follow these rules, you are going to be successful with seed. It's literally as simple as that. In addition to the rules that we have, when you buy one of our seed packets, on the back of the seed packet, we have something called an info bar. We're the only company that does this. And the info bar tells you absolutely everything you need to know about how to plant the seed. It tells you if it's an heirloom variety, it tells you how tall it gets, it tells you what the minimum germination temperature is, it tells you if it should be transplanted or if it planted directly. 
um, it tells you how easy it is to grow. It's one, two, three. We should actually extend that to about five, but currently it's one, two, three. It tells you if it's a, go a gourmet item, if it's a herb item, if it's a medicinal item. Um, it tells you how many days to harvest. It gives you a lot number so that we can track the seed. It tells you how you can plant it, whether you plant it in a pot or if, if it's a bush, a bush variety. It gives you um, the germination, a temperature on top, and then underneath that it tells you how many days to germinate at that temperature. Um, there's a code here that uh, this one says TA, which is tender annual. It says 25 seeds in a packet. It gives you the seed spacing. And then there's a code right at the end, which will tell you uh, what special seed treatment needs to be done. So it's, it's a very comprehensive amount of information on this little label. If you follow this information, you will have success of starting seed. So let's just cover the rules quickly on starting seed. And they're pretty simple rules. So the first rule is if the crop that you're harvesting grows above the ground. So I'm talking you harvest tomatoes off a plant, you harvest pumpkins off a plant, you harvest um, beans off a plant, you harvest uh, chilies and, and cucumbers and things like that. Those seeds are best started in some form of seedling tray or seedling pot. And you're going to say to me, but you can plant beans directly in the soil, and I agree with you, and I'll cover that a little bit further now. Okay, so if the, if the crop that you're harvesting grows above the ground, start them in a seedling tray or, or a, a seedling pot of some kind. If the crop that you harvest is below the ground, so we're talking turnips, we're talking radish, carrots, beetroot, all of those wonderful things, then you plant the seed directly in the soil. And what you'll find is that root crops generally can germinate in cooler soil. So right now it's spring, it might be 25, 26, 27 degrees outside, but your soil, your soil still hasn't warmed up yet. So what's going to happen is if you take your, your pepper or your tomato seed and plant it directly in the soil, the soil is too cold for that seed to germinate. So either one of two things is going to happen. The first thing is the seed is going to rot because the seed is too cold, but it's got wet, so it's absorbed moisture and it's swelled up, and it just can't get started because it's too cold, so it just starts to rot. The other thing is, maybe you weren't so diligent with your watering and that seed hasn't absorbed enough water, and it'll germinate in three weeks' time, but then you're going to say, nothing germinated, let me replant something else. So the minute it starts germinating, you disturb the soil, you destroy the baby seedling, or the baby seed, and you plant your new crop. So you need to actually understand what needs to happen for that seed. So the seeds have specific requirements. So I said to you um, just now that seeds that grow above the ground should be started in pots. And a lot of our customers will start, for example, bean seeds in pots in the middle of winter or very, very early spring when it's too cold to plant the beans outside. But it, it's now mid-September, or we're approaching mid, well, it actually is mid-September, and you can start planting your beans outside. So you can take that bean that's been growing in this jiffy pot, plant it directly outside, and you've got four weeks on the growing season. So if you started your beans in the middle of August, uh, when it was too cold to plant beans out, you can now plant a proper bean plant outside, and you'll be harvesting beans off that plant in six weeks' time. So you can get a jump on the season like that. So that is one, one reason why you want to plant a, a, a seed that is normally planted directly in the ground, like beans. So we normally plant our beans directly in the soil, and we only plant them towards the end of September, early October. Uh, we plant our corn directly in the soil. We're harvesting those, those crops above the ground. Getting a jump on the season, Planting those crops in pots in the middle of August, perfect way to do it. The, the crops that are, that are growing below the ground, so your, your, um, your root crops, if you plant them in some kind of pot and then plant them into the soil, if you're using a jiffy pot, it really shouldn't be a problem, but I think it's a waste of a jiffy pot, and the seed will germinate in cool soil anyway. So... Um, I hope I've covered that. Rule number one, if the plant grows above the, if the, if the, the part of the plant that you're harvesting grows above the ground, start it in a seedling tray of some kind. If the plant grows 
below the ground directly in the soil. Um, if there are any questions, you guys are welcome just to uh, uh, type it up in the comments and Courtney will just read the questions out to me and I'll answer them for you. The second um, rule, and it's probably one of the most important rules, and it's a rule that a lot of people get wrong, is that when you take your seed, so let's take this cucumber seed over here. Let's just open the cucumber seed. So the rule is very simple. You plant the seed three times deeper than the seed is long. Okay. Don't go and plant this seed five centimeters deep. It's going to struggle to get to the light. Okay. So the rule is, it's a general rule. Some of the seed needs to be surface sown. And I'll cover that now. But the general rule is you want to plant the seed three times deeper than the seed is long. And that'll give you the perfect germination depth. There are certain seeds that need to be surface sown. And these are typically seeds that are very, very small. Like a, a lot of your herb seeds are, are incredibly tiny. And they just need to be surface sown. Take the seeds, sprinkle them on the surface of whatever you're planting them on. And they will germinate as long as you're keeping them moist. But we've got some tricks for that as well, which I'll show you just now. Um, certain of the heirloom lettuce varieties need light to germinate and if you look on the back of the packet there's a code over here and that code will tell you if the seed needs light to germinate um, i hear we're getting a lot of, um, of of wind noise in our tunnel unfortunately there's not much i can do about it the wind has been pumping like crazy for the last couple of days so let me just get back to the um the lettuce varieties there's certain heritage lettuce varieties that need to be surface sown because they need light to germinate and um, the majority of the lettuce varieties don't need light to germinate but what we find is the shallower you you sow the lettuce the better you're going to have your your germination on the lettuce then certain certain seeds need to be soaked and these are typically your your swiss chard and your beetroot seeds not all seed needs to be soaked what we'll do is um, we'll take a glass just a small little glass whatever seed you're going to be planting the following day just drop the seed into the glass and let them soak overnight the seed coat of beetroot and or the actual seed let me show you what the seed i'm pretty sure you guys know what the seed looks like so if we I love these new packets because they're resealable. So if you look at a beetroot or a Swiss chard seed, it looks like a little, um, like a little bumpy lump. And that bumpy lump is a multi-celled seed. So what happens is this single seed actually has multiple seeds inside it. And the seed coat is very corky. So if I drop it into the water, you see it's going to float. And it'll float for... A couple of hours until it absorbs water once it absorbs the water they'll actually sink down if the seed doesn't sink down it's still a good seed especially with beetroot and swiss chard but if you soak this seed it allows the seed coat to absorb moisture and the the the, the water will penetrate to the actual seed that needs moisture to swell up and uh, and rehydrate itself so there's certain seeds we find that pea seed overnight 50% better germination rate if you soak the pea seed overnight. The nice thing is if you drop them into the water and any pea seeds don't swell, you know those seeds will not germinate anyway. So you can just remove those seeds from your planting selection and just plant the rest and you'll have a really, really great germination rate. We don't soak bean seeds. I know a lot of people do soak bean seeds. We don't find that... Um, or we actually just don't have the time to soak all of the bean varieties before we plant them. What we do is we run our drip irrigation on the beds where we're going to be planting the beans. We run it the day before and the next day we just go and plant directly into those beds. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear the chicks. We've got a whole lot of chicks inside our, our seedling tunnel as well. It's nice and warm inside here so um, the chicks are really enjoying the warmth and um, hopefully they're not disturbing you too much cool so those are are the three main rules of planting 
um, crops above the ground, plant them in some kind of, of transplantable uh, media. P crops below the ground, plant them directly in the soil. Um, plant the seeds three times deeper than they are long, and then certain seeds need to be soaked. With, with living seeds, we actually give you the information that you need, whether they need to be soaked. So you can see this is, this is um, Kaleidoscope Swiss chard on the back over here. That last code at the bottom, it says A, and that, and that means that the seed needs to be soaked for the best germination. If you don't soak your, your Swiss chard or your beetroot seed, what you're going to find is that they will still germinate. They just take an extra two or three days to germinate because they need to rehydrate themselves inside the soil. They haven't been pre-hydrated um, by you before you've planted the seeds. Cool. So uh, the next thing is a lot of people will go to their local nursery to go and buy um, media to plant their seeds. And the biggest mistake that most people do is they go and buy seedling mix. And the thinking is, I'm growing seedlings and I need seedling mix. And if you go and look at seedling mix that you buy, you'll see that the seedling mix, and I'm going to actually open this bag quickly, you'll see that the seedling mix is actually very coarse. And the air spaces in the seedling mix is too large for the seed to germinate correctly so if you this is the living seeds germination mix and I've, i'm not too sure how close you can zoom in here but the germination mix we make this germination mix ourselves we use our, our vermicast that we that we make ourselves we use coir vermi um it's vermicast or or um uh it's it's um it's composted worm manure, <laughs> which is the vermicast. We use vermiculite, which is an expanded mica product. We use perlite, and then we use coir. And I'll show you our base pack now. So this is the germination mix that we produce on Living Seeds Farm. And it really, really is fantastic germination mix. Every single seedling behind me has been, has been grown using this germination mix. We have not fertilized these seedlings yet. So it just gives you an idea as to how nutritious our germination mix is. So we produce germination mix, which we sell pre-mixed, um, that you can buy directly from us. What we also do is we have a base pack, and I'll run through the base pack now. But the problem with buying a seedling mix in the nursery is you're supposed to germinate your seed in a germination mix. Once the seedlings are at the correct size, you transplant them from the germination mix into a seedling mix. And the seedling mix has less food in it. And the air spaces are a lot larger. Whereas if you're taking a tiny seed, so if you're taking a tiny tomato or pepper seed and you're putting it into the seedling mix, what happens is the air spaces around the seed are too large. And what happens is that tiny little root that comes out of the seed is called a radical. And that radical, if it dries out, the seed dies. There's, there's no way to rehydrate it. If the radical dies, the seed will die. And this is actually a very important thing um, that a lot of people don't understand, is that um, they will plant their seeds in a seedling tray. So let's say we've got a seedling tray over here, and it can be a plastic seedling tray. It can be one of these jiffy strip seedling trays. But if you plant your seeds in the seedling tray and you are religious watering it every single evening or you're religious watering it every single uh, morning and then one morning you're late for work and you rush out of the door and halfway to work you realize oh i didn't water my seedlings and those seeds are germinating there's a very high chance that if this tray dries out the seeds will die it's literally as simple as that it takes it takes literally a couple of minutes for a seed to dry. And this is, this is one of the things where we have a lot of people um, that struggle to germinate carrots. And we, we've developed a technique that we actually uh, uh, teach our customers. And the, and the technique is very simple. If you go to your local nursery and you buy a length of hessian, so if your, tab if your, if your bed is two meters long like this table over here, and you plant your carrots in their rows in the in the um, in your bed. 
The carrots need to be planted three times deeper than the seed is long, okay, which presents a problem because if the soil dries out and that tiny little root that comes out of the seed dries out, the carrot seed will die in the soil. It's just, it, it, it's never going to show that it, 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 it grew. And all it takes is for the top surface of your soil to dry out. And if you know on a really, really hot day, if that top soil dries out, um, it, it, it's first of all going to cook the seed. And second of all, the, the root's going to dry out. So how do you actually keep the moisture there? The easiest way to do it is go to your, your nursery, buy a length of hessian or garden hessian. And you plant your, your carrot seeds, take the hessian, lay it out over the over your carrot bed and then you water the carrots through the hessian and what it does is it creates a, a, a micro a microclimate between the top of the hessian and the soil to keep humidity or moisture there so it allows you that extra couple of hours to get to your precious carrot seeds to water them and then all you need to do is from about day five day six just start lifting the hessian and the minute that you can see those lines of of um, of green um, carrot leaves coming through the ground you can lift the hessian out if your carrots grow through the hessian and you lift the hessian it's going to be like a a giant wax strip in the garden so you're going to just rip all of your carrots out one of the tricks that my wife loves to do is when she's planting carrots, uh, she doesn't use the hessian, but she's a, a much more um, experienced gardener. So what she'll do is she'll, she'll plant carrots. She'll mix the carrot seeds um, with one, uh, um, one third carrots and two thirds um, radish seed. And what will happen is the radish will come through the ground a lot earlier than the then the carrots it'll also show her where the carrot seeds are coming up and when she harvests the radish to eat in our salads it's going to space the carrots as well which is really really cool so let's get on to the different techniques or or methods oh let's just let's just finish up on our germination mix so the germination mix it's a very simple um, recipe that we have um, and let me show you exactly how we do it so we sell a base pack like this this is our base pack. So we have the Fertilis earthworm castings. I need to move it over. My, my director is telling me to move it over. So let me just move it over slightly over here. Okay. So these are, these are the four components. Are we good? We're good. These are the four components of our germination mix. You can add other things as well. I know people add kelp. People add um, um, some kind of... of of liquid fertilizer um, into this as well. My honest opinion is, as long as you're using the vermicompost, you don't need to add any additional fertilizer for at least the first four weeks. So this is Koya, it's a 600 gram Koya block. Um, this is a, a 5 DM vermicast, 400 grams of perlite and 400 grams of vermiculite. You take all four of these, put them into a wheelbarrow, um, with uh, between five and seven liters of water and what's going to happen is you are going to create a germination mix that is basically the same as this germination mix over here the only difference between this germination mix and this germination mix is that this is the fertilis um, vermicast and this is the vermicast that are made on living seeds farm um, but otherwise it's exactly the same and if you don't want the mess of making it yourself, buy a bag of germination mix. If you want to make it yourself, you can do it. Um, you can do it very easily with our germination base pack. This will give you a germination mix that is ideally suited for growing all of the seed that Living Seed supplies. It's as simple as that. Please do not go and buy seedling mix. If you buy a seedling mix, your germination uh, your germination rates are going to be absolutely atrocious and unfortunately because the, yeah i need to wait because the wind has picked up sure we yesterday the wind was pumping at 33 kilometers an hour on living seeds farm and I, I walked into this tunnel and it was making an absolutely horrendous noise so um yeah please don't use seedling mix 
to, uh, to start your, your seeds, you have to use a germination mix. It's the biggest thing, and I, it's, it's a case of, I wish um, more nurseries would tell customers when they're buying seedling mix or ask them, are you buying seedling mix to start seeds or do you need a germination mix? Cool. So let, let's get on to a couple of techniques that we have of starting seeds. So um, one of the biggest problems is that many customers are using plastic trays or polystyrene trays. And you see behind us that we use plastic trays and polystyrene trays. And the reason for that is we produce literally thousands and thousands of seedlings every single year and we just don't have the space to use these techniques when we are growing certain um, rare seed where we've been given seed we've only been given a couple of seeds we will plant them into um, one of our wallless and i'll show you now what a wallless planting technique is um, we will show you uh, um, we'll plant them using one of these methods over here to ensure that we give those few seeds that we have the absolute best start in life so what we have here uh, let me just undo this over here so what we have here is a living seeds pot maker these pot makers are locally made we have um, one of our moderators his name is Emil Tiot um, he is a, a mold maker and an artist of note and he makes these for us so these are locally made it's a, it's made um, by a small south african company we don't import them it's not imported from china um, and you'll see living seed spends a lot of time and effort supporting local businesses so when you buy one of these products you you're actually supporting a local small company um, that is um i need a spray bottle please okay um, you, you're supporting a local small, small company, Living Seeds is a small company, and we support small companies in turn. Um, they made with a, um, I think there's a ceramic, Emil told me what's inside here, um, but these are 100% inert materials, they're not going to leach anything out. Um, it's, a, it's an epoxy, and I think there's a ceramic powder inside here which gives it the color, um, but I, I stand to be corrected. So, thank you very much. So, to use the Living Seeds Pot Maker is very simple. Okay, what, what we do is you lay down your, your piece of paper. Okay, we wet the paper like this. You take the pot maker and you just roll it. Oh, I see there's two over here. So, you just roll it like this okay you bend it over and you just give it a twist and then all you do is you pull your pot out and now you have a pot so you can spend the evening rolling hundreds of pots like this and then the next morning all you need to do is take your germination mix put your i'm not going to do it now because I need to use the space but put your germination mix into the pot okay plant your seed and then it just needs to be watered it's as simple as that what i would do is i would take one of our our, our plant tags and just put a plant tag inside here so that you know what's on here or alternatively if you're using white paper you can write the name of what you are planting onto the white paper um, it's as simple as that guys the living seeds pot maker is absolutely awesome locally made and one of the easiest things it's very it's it, it, it's it's lots of fun for, for kids to make them if your grandkids are coming out um, for the day you can get them to make hundreds of pots for you um, in a matter of one or two hours cool so that's the living seeds pot maker okay the next tool that i'm going to talk about is the living seeds plug master so this is our this is our plug master that's uh, uh, that we use on living seeds farm you can see it's been it, it, it's been used um, extensively so we were given a very similar tool by jane griffiths and she asked us if we could make something like this locally there is something 
um, available in the US. So um, Jane gave us the US version of, of, this, of this tool and we had a look at it. We changed a couple of things. We changed the design of the handle and we changed the design of the divot makers over here. Um, they used plastic divot makers and when I was using the one given to me by Jane, I think um, in the first week I broke one or two of the divot makers because they were plastic. And that told us immediately that we actually had to um, make a different plan. So basically what we have is we just have um, a dome nut, a steel dome nut, um, and that makes the divots for you. So what you need to do, <coughs> excuse me, is you need to take your germination mix. So here's our germination mix over here. And it needs to be quite moist. So if you look at this germination mix, if I squeeze it, you'll see that there's water leaking out. I'm going to need a, a, a towel after this, please. It's nice having assistance. <laughs> so with the Living Seeds pot maker, so, uh, I mean, with the Living Seeds plug master, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the uh, germination mix and just push it up to the side. So basically all you do is you take this and it's got two handles. Sorry, it's, it's, got the, it's got the top handle over here and it's got the bottom handle. So you hold it by the bottom handle and you just push it down to compact the, um, the germination mix. So you can see the germination mix is over here and I'm just using this lid as an example so let me just turn it like this <coughs> so now what you do is you don't use the bottom handle you use the top handle and you just start pressing down and as you press down i don't know if you can see on the front but you can see there's liquid i'm going to hold it for a while so that more liquid comes out but you can see the liquid is being pushed out so what we're doing is we're compressing the block and we're making the divot so then all you need to do is while you're pushing down you lift this bottom handle so you lift the bottom handle and what happens is you just break the seal you have four perfect planting blocks okay you can handle the planting blocks um that's fine thank you okay so you can handle the planting blocks basically from word go however and let me just sit down over here so this process is called a wall-less planting block so most people understand that you need some kind of seedling tray or some kind of seedling pot that's going to hold the soil um, and and keep the seeds safe what this planting block does is you can you, um, you can plant your seed into the hole so the first thing is someone's going to say but the hole is too deep and i agree for a lot of seeds the hole is too deep so what you do is you take a little bit of your germination mix and you make the hole shallower simple as that you take your seed so let's just take i don't know which one i open now uh, let's just take a a pepper seed over here so we just take a little pepper seed Okay, so you take your pepper seed and you plant your pepper seed on top of that you take a little bit of soil and you cover your pepper seed done there's enough water in this block right now to keep that seed hydrated for the next two or three days there's no need to water this planting block for at least two or three days unless you've got them in full sun um, the nice thing is we have our microgreen trays so we have a black microgreen tray it's got no holes in it we have a green a tray which has got holes in it and then we have a clear dome so what you can do is you can take these planting blocks and you can put them into the tray like this and what you want to do is you want to keep a space between each block okay so each one of these trays can hold eight blocks you want a space between each block because what's going to happen is that seed's going to germinate and send its roots out through the block but the minute that the root approaches the side of the block, the root's going to be turned back in. And it's called air pruning. It's a, it's a, it's a real thing. It's called air pruning. And the seedling will self-prune its roots. And it'll run its roots all the way inside this block without the roots actually coming out. 
when you want to plant this seedling, so this seedling is going to grow into a nice beautiful seedling, it's time to transplant the seedling, all you need to do is take the block with the seedling and put it directly in the soil. There's no ripping of the seedling, so if I take one of these seedlings out of these trays and I rip the seedling out, you actually hear a tearing noise. And that tearing noise are the tiny little root hairs that have bonded to the side of the, of the, um, of the container. So you rip that seedling out and immediately the seedling is going to go, what have you done to me? And it's going to go into what's called transplant shock. And you'll plant the seedling into the, into the soil and the seedling will look at you for like five days and go, am I going to live or am I going to die? And you look at your seedlings and you go, are they going to live or are they going to die? And that seedling needs to um, rebuild all of those tiny little root hairs that you destroyed when you pulled it out of, the, out of the planting tray. So this method over here, so every single method that we're showing you gives you the best transplant on your seedling. So the, um, the, um, the paper pot maker, you you transplant the entire thing into the soil, the roots will push through that little piece of newspaper. With the living seeds planter, these blocks over here, you plant the blocks directly into the soil. There is zero transplant shock. The plants just carry on growing. And as long as your, your soil, the only thing I can tell you is you want to make sure that when you're transplanting this block into the soil, don't have dry soil and a moist planting block. Because what's going to ha happen is you're going to have a, a moisture barrier there where um, you're going to have a dry area over here and a wet area. What's going to happen is it'll suck the moisture out of the, out of the planting block and put the plant under stress. Or if you have a dry block and a wet soil, the dry block is going to set up a moisture barrier where the moisture is not going to transfer. So um, just make sure that you have a relatively even um moisture between your seedling and your soil cool so the next things we're going to talk about are the jiffy plugs the jiffy pots and the jiffy strips so everybody that i talk to when i talk to you about jiffy plugs everyone says you've got the jiffy 7 and the jiffy 7c what is the difference okay and it's very simple so the jiffy 7 is a very thin compact peat based it's it's not just peat but there is peat inside here it's and it's from a sustainable source as well um, it's a very compact um, peat based pellet and the jiffy 7c is a 100 percent coir based pellet this one's got food this one doesn't have food so when do you use which one and i'm going to show you how they work now let me just have a sip out of this can we see them there's a um, checker even on okay so the jiffy 7 contains food for your seedling the jiffy 7 seed does not contain food which means that you will need to feed the seedling all you do and normally what we do is we put it into warm water because it just works a lot faster but we dump these into a into a large container of water and you can see the 7c is already swelled it's already swelled to twice its size so the question is when do you use which one the jiffy 7c would be used in a hydroponic or an aquaponic situation you don't want to be introducing coir particles into your hydroponic or aquaponic situation whereas the jiffy 7c is a coir, and i'll take it out for you quickly and this guy's going to keep on expanding, even though I've taken it out. So the Jiffy 7C is 100% coir. You use this if you're doing hydroponics or aquaponics. This one is slightly cheaper than the 7. Okay, but this is, that's, the, that's the main difference. The Jiffy 7 has food in it. If you're planting into soil, use the Jiffy 7s. If you are using um, aquaponics or hydroponics, use the 7C because it's 100% coir. This little guy over here is taking his time but it normally works a lot faster if the water is warmer. They come in different sizes. 
Um, we will use the Jiffy um, 7s ourselves. We don't use the 7Cs. We don't do hydroponics or aquaponics. Okay, so the next things we're going to be talking about are um, the Jiffy strips and the Jiffy pots. So these are the Jiffy strips. Um, they come in a couple of sizes. I think we sell two sizes. Uh, it's the two most popular sizes. The nice thing is, and I'll show you with the, with the Jiffy pots, is that you can... You can have your six seedlings growing inside here. The minute the six seedlings get to a point where they need to be transplanted and the weather outside is still not conducive to transplant, you can take the small jiffy pot and transplant it directly into a large jiffy pot like that. Okay, and what will happen is you are now giving the seedling inside here extra space to grow and you can line this gap over here with a nutrient-rich food. Because by the time it needs to be transplanted, it's about time to start fertilizing the, the little seedlings. If you're using our germination mix, um, there's enough food for four to six weeks. After that, you're going to need to start feeding the seedlings. So you can transplant the smaller one into the larger one. And when it's ready, you take this and you plant it directly inside the soil. And it is another um, wallless planting technique. Cool, guys. Um, the only other thing is, talking about these trays over here, we have a nice clear dome lid. And what you do is, you take the, the clear dome lid and you put this lid on top of your seedlings to create a nice humid environment. We use this when we're growing microgreens, we use it when, we, when we're starting seedlings. Um, especially when we get given sort of like two or three pepper seeds and they, and they need to be like sort of very, very carefully maintained. What we'll do is we'll start them off in this because it gives a nice humidity dome. It keeps the moisture up. The nice thing is you'll see that there's a gap on the tray over here. So if there's too much water, what will happen is the water will, will sit in the bottom of the tray and your seedlings will sit above the water level. So all you need to do is just pour some water inside here. They will wick up whatever water they need and in any excess water it runs down to the bottom. Cool guys, um, the only other thing that I want to talk about is when you water your seedlings. So, watering seedlings, my personal opinion is the Gardena gardening rose. Okay, and this is, this is the cheapest Gardena rose that they sell. And we have tons of these. This is all we use to water our seedlings, is this little rose. You don't need... So this is also a, a Gardena rose. It's the exact same rose. It's not one of those multifunction squirt spray dash dash dot dot SOS things. This is just a, a plain a Gardena rose, but it's got a trigger on it as well. So when the guys are watering the seedlings, they're not wasting water. Um, I, I, would, I would seriously invest in, in the cheapest Gardena rose, but it has to be the fine rose. Um, those... Um, those trigger guns with 59 different combinations and they do all different things. Don't even worry about them. The rose is what you're looking for. So you can water your seedlings with the rose and it doesn't matter what method you use that I've shown you over here. Um, the Gardena rose will, will meet your needs. It's as simple as that. Um, I think we can do some questions now. Okay, so we have a whole lot of questions. Courtney's going to read the questions to me, and I will do my best to answer them for you. Okay, so someone wants to know how long do we have to soak seeds that need soaking? Okay, so normally uh, soaking seeds is anything from 4 to 12 hours. The minute you go over 12 hours, you start risking your seed drowning. What we will do is we'll soak them overnight, or we'll soak them first thing in the morning and plant them just before knockoff time. So... Around 12 hours, I wouldn't go over 12 hours because you start risking drowning your seeds. And how long do your seedlings need to be indoors before you can move them outdoors? Okay, so the question is how long do seedlings need to be indoors before you move them outdoors? Uh, so if you look behind me over here, some of these seedlings have hit the point where they need to go out now. Um, these seedlings are anywhere between... Depending on the varieties, we've got some tomato seedlings. Love, just pass me that end tray over there that's been half planted out. Yeah. Okay, so what we've done is we've split our, our tomato planting this year. We've got bottom tunnels and top tunnels. So 
of the tomatoes and you can see 50%. So 50% of the tomatoes are planted in the bottom tunnels and the other 50% of the tomatoes are planted in the top tunnels. Just in case something happens, you just you never know what's going to happen the wind comes and destroys tunnels. So these seedlings are, I mean, you can see they are a little bit overgrown. Um, they need to be planted out. These are about 10 weeks old. Okay, They should have been planted out about two, three weeks ago, but it was just too cold. So what we will do with these tomato seedlings, and I'll do it with this one that I've just ripped out of the ground. You see that purple bottom over there. We will transplant the seedling so that these two cotyledons, these are the two halves of the seed that you planted. These two cotyledons are level with the soil. Okay, um, I know some people actually break the cotyledons off and will plant it up to the first two, up to the first two leaf as well. Um, both will work. We plant it up to the cotyledons. It's entirely up to you. There, there isn't a wrong way um, of planting it. There is a better way, but not a wrong way. Okay, cucumbers, the question is, can cucumbers be grown outdoors or in tunnels? Both. You can grow cucumbers outdoors and in tunnels. The, the biggest problem with growing cucumbers in tunnels is that if your tunnel is closed and it doesn't have any ventilation, the plants will overheat, it'll create heat stress, it'll bring on diseases like powdery mildew a lot faster. Uh, if they're grown outdoors, we've had great success um, with with cucumbers in tunnels, in, in, in plastic tunnels, in netting tunnels, and outdoors. The only thing I would do is if you're planting things like cucumbers and, and tomatoes and melons and you are trellising them up, I would remove the bottom 50 centimeters of leaves. So it's just the stem and then the leaves start. You, you, basically what you're trying to do is you want airflow underneath the plant. What that airflow does is... Um, it slows down powdery mildew. You're going to get powdery mildew. It's going to happen. But it slows down powdery mildew. It slows down things like, um, like late blight and early blight um, in tomatoes. So removing the bottom 50 centimeters of leaves, whether it's in a tunnel or outdoors, is one of the best things that you can do. Can I have another glass, please? I'm thirsty. A clean glass. I can use this one, but I think I'm going to gross people out. Can I, discuss, can I discuss surface sowing seed? Yes. Okay, so surface sown seed, um, I did say I'd cover it a little bit later. So when you surface sowing seed, the biggest problem with surface sown seed is, number one, they are generally tiny, tiny seeds. And I'm talking um, some of the seed is 1 50th of a millimeter across. They are, they are minuscule, like seriously, seriously minuscule. So you can't plant them underground. So basically what you do is you take a planting block like this planting block over here. You would flatten off the surface. You take a couple of seeds. You would sprinkle a couple of seeds. And when I say a couple of seeds, you probably pinch a few seeds out and it's going to be 50 seeds that you are, are, are trying not to sow 50 seeds there. But you'll probably put 50 seeds down. So you'll surface sow the seeds. The biggest problem is... The top surface of whatever material you are sowing that seed onto is going to dry out. And this is where it's critical to actually have some form of humidity dome um, to keep your seeds. There's a specific way that it goes around. So there is um, a humidity dome is, is one of the best ways to keep um, your little seed hydrated and to keep the surface moist because what needs to happen is that tiny seed needs to put out that first root that first root is called a radical and that first root needs to go deep enough in the soil so that it can start supporting thank you so that it can start supporting the actual tiny little seedling and it needs to have the humidity available for the seed to be able to push the radical down only once the radical is pushed down will that little seed split. It's generally a, uh, a, a dicot. So you'll see the two little leaves, those two first seeds, those two first leaves that come out as, are dicot leaves. And each one of those leaves is one half of the seed that you planted. Um, once you see the leaves, you can actually remove the humidity dome because what's going to happen is, um, first of all, it can overheat which is a problem. 
I would never leave a seed or a seedling that's in a humidity dome in direct sunlight. Um, it's, it's a very, very bad idea. Rather put it under a carport um, where if the sun's moving past the carport or um, past your, your patio, make sure that the, where the sun comes from, it doesn't get direct sun over here. So as long as the sun passes close to it, and then every day just turn it around so that your seedling doesn't grow towards the light like that. Cool. Just repeat that, please. How can you fix leggy seedlings? Okay, so leggy seedlings are a huge problem, especially um, in early spring where people are trying to get a jump on the season. So they're planting their seedlings early and they're keeping them indoors. And what's going to happen is you're going to have this, this very, very long seedling. And I've seen leggy seedlings like five, six, even 10 centimeters long. And you have this very thin, pale seedling and then two seed leaves right at the top. And unfortunately, if you have leggy seedlings like that, my honest advice is start again. Because what's going to happen is that tiny seedling needs to push water all the way up that very fine stem. And the minute that there's any environmental stress, too cold, too hot, too humid, too dry, what's going to happen is that fine stem is going to collapse. And you'll see it with your leggy seedlings, those fine stems collapse. And that fine stem is collapsing because the plant has come under some kind of stress. And the stem collapses, the seedling dies, and you lose the seedling. So if you have leggy seedlings, my honest opinion is it's really not worth saving them. Throw them away, start again. Sorry, guys. Any tips for growing zucchinis? Small zucchinis or big zucchinis? Because they get big very quickly. Okay, so um, zucchinis are incredibly easy to grow. They, it's, it, it's, it literally becomes a weed um, if, you, if you plant more than six of them because you will never be able to eat all of the zucchinis off six plants. Um, they grow faster than you can eat them. Um, if you if you harvest if you harvest zucchinis this size tonight for supper tomorrow morning you come out the zucchinis are this size I don't know how they do it but they do so what I would do is if you planting zucchinis now I would still plant zucchinis um, in in seedling trays you can see over here we, uh, can you see that that tray over here are there zucchinis behind me are there any pumpkins behind me yeah bring it closer so. This is our tray of zucchinis over here. I'm not too sure which zucchini it is, but there's a code written on the tray and it tells us what's planted inside here. So we, we will start pumpkins and, and, um, and, and squash in trays. Um, I'm a firm believer of starting pumpkins and squash in trays. A lot of people say plant them directly. You will get the best germination on your pumpkins, your cucumbers, your, your melons, um, your squashes if you start them in trays. So what I would do is I would start them in a relatively large um, tray. So either use one of the larger Jiffy pots or, or use the, um, the plug master blocks. I would start them in these. Start them indoors. If, you, if you're still in a cold area, for example, like, um, like the Midlands, I believe it was like 10 degrees in the Midlands yesterday, it's still too cold to be planting your zucchinis directly in the soil. Start them in a seedling tray. If you've got a heating pad, use a heating pad. Um, on Living Seeds Farm, we don't use heating pads. We actually go and buy king-size electric blankets. And the king-size electric blankets are our heating pads. We put them onto number one. If it's two or higher, you're going to cook your seed. Um, but alternatively, we sell it um, it's on, on our website. And I would put the trays on the heating pad, start them off. If, if you plant zucchini seeds in a jiffy pot or in a, um, a plug master block, if you, if you put the seed inside here, yeah, the seed will be out of the ground in five or six days. It's like literally that quick. If they've got bottom heat, they're going to pop out of the soil. Four true leaves. Plant them out into the ground as long as all danger of frost is passed, naturally. Do they prefer a specific soil type? So zucchinis, any pumpkin, um, are, are hungry plants. They're really, really hungry plants. What I would do is, the first thing I would put down is I'd put bone meal down. Um, 
a very good tip. If you've got cutworm problems in your soil, if you've got cutworms, it is an indication that your soil is um, lacking in calcium. So we've got uh, two tunnels that we're planting our tomatoes in. We've planted tunnel, uh, tomatoes in, in the bottom tunnels. We have augmented with, um, with bone meal, I think, four, four or five times. We've had Indian runner ducks inside the tunnels eating, eating um, cutworm larva. Um, and when we planted our seedlings, we put more bone meal down. We, we're losing approximately 10 seedlings a night um, on a planting of about 3,000 plants. Um, the top tunnels, which are, and those tunnels are, three, are I think, three, three years old now. The top tunnels are eight years old. We've been augmenting with, with bone meal at every single planting. We have not lost a single seedling um, to cut to him because our calcium levels in that soil is, is perfect. So if you've got calcium, if you've got cut to him issues, put, cal put bone meal down. Not dolomite, put bone meal down. So what kind of soil do they want? They want some bone meal to start off with. And then I would put down a, um, a Vita Grow, which is the, the Talborn Organics, the yellow bag. I'd put down about a handful per, per, per square meter. Or at each planting hole, I'd put a handful inside there. That'll get them off to a flying start. The minute you see the first flowers forming, feed them with the Talborn Organics Vita Fruit and Flower, which is the red bag. Um, and then stand back and watch those zucchinis grow. They, they're, going to, they're going to impress you. Is there an alternative to bone meal? Is there an alternative to bone meal? Um, gypsum. Gypsum probably would be... Um, I know a lot of vegans don't like to use bone meal in their soil. Um, so what I would do is I would get some gypsum and you can buy gypsum literally at any hardware store. Um, the rate that you put gypsum down would probably be around half a cup per running meter. 